Okay, so I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the uh, sustainable harvest. And what a sustainable harvest is, is the amount of worms that you can harvest without creating a decrease in your overall supply of worms. Um, what will happen a lot of times to farmers is that they will uh, either sell too many worms or start selling them too early. And they can get, they can get caught short and not be able to fulfill orders or may have to turn away business. And nobody wants that. So I think that the probably one of the most useful parts of the urban worm calculator is the ability for you to input a sustainable harvest goal. And it's going to be able to tell you both in the results section down here, but then also up here in the uh, scoreboard section uh, when you are going to meet that goal. So let's just uh, use an example number here. We've already said that we want to sell our worms for, for $20 per pound. Let's just say we have a goal of uh, $10,000 $10, per month in revenue. That's going to be 500 pounds of worms. Uh, so let's just put that in here and see what the calculator gives us. Uh, so we input 500 pounds, and it says that we are going to reach that sustainable harvest goal in June of 2017. And there are several, number, several different things that come into play here about how this number gets calculated. Uh, uh, it depends on how much how, how much you start with uh, in terms of uh, your your starting quantity, what your monthly reproduction rate is, uh, when you're going to start harvesting the worms, how many of the how basically what weight of worms you're going to be harvesting every month uh, once you do start harvesting, and uh, what your monthly die-off rate is. So let's just play with a couple of these numbers, and uh, and see how they affect the sustainable harvest goal. We'll just say we start with 20 pounds of worms, and that number goes from June of 2017 to, to uh, March of 2017. Uh, so we'll get back to D10 there. And monthly reproduction rate, we can bump that up to 35%, and then that takes us from June to January. Uh, we can say that we're going to have no die-offs, and uh, we're going to actually hit that again in January. Um, and so you can kind of see how the how this uh, how all the kind of factors uh, come into play here when it comes to calculating the sustainable harvest goal. Maybe we can say that instead of harvesting the 10 pounds here, we're going to bump that up to 20 pounds, and uh, so that's going to push us back from June 2017 to September of 2017. And uh, so this is just a good tool to allow you to see, okay, based on your goals what you should really be selling along the way. And uh, and it might give you an idea, okay, hey, I don't want to really be selling too much too soon because then I will not hit my sustain, I will not be able to hit my revenue goals here. Uh, so this is something I think that, uh, that a lot of worm farmers can use to kind of keep themselves out of trouble and be able to manage their worm supply. All right, so our last two numbers to input are vermicomposting efficiency and the vermicast output percentage. Uh, vermicomposting uh, efficiency is a fancy way of saying how much of your worm's weight are they going to be able to eat each day. And uh, the number that most people use is anywhere from 50 to 100%. Sometimes it may be a little bit less, especially in cold weather and, or in poor conditions. Uh, we'll just say 50% although you can select up to 100% here. Um, and the next thing is vermicast output percentage. And what this uh, number is, is the percentage of, your, of the worm food that is actually going to become worm castings. And I think people are surprised by how low these numbers are, or at least the numbers in the, in the calculator are. I've got a range of 5 to 30% with a default of, uh, of 10%. And uh, the reason for this is that the majority of foods that you're going to be feeding your worms, uh, for, or at least vermicomposting with your worms, are going to be a majority of water weight. Things like vegetable and fruit waste are going to be mostly water weight. Uh, so that will not be output in the form of worm castings. It may be in the form of vermicompost itself, which tends to be very damp, but the worm castings themselves, uh, you can probably never expect more than 20 to 30 uh, percent. So that's why I've got the number set so low. All right, so here we are in the results section. I just want to go through each of these columns, kind of let you know what everything means. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory, but uh, we'll go through it anyway. 
Uh, in general terms, the uh, results here are just a 24-month breakdown uh, of your results, just going month by month. And so you can see we've got the month column here, we've got the quantity column, and then this is again the weight and uh, how it is reproducing over the uh, uh, over those 24 months. This is your daily vermicomposting capacity. This is uh, in terms of pounds or uh, or kilograms, depending on what unit of measure you're using, uh, of how much food that you can uh, vermicompost every day. Uh, this is the daily castings output. Uh, for that specific day. So uh, again, as you can see in uh, December 31st of 2015, uh, you can, you might possibly be putting out two pounds of, uh, of worm castings. Uh, you've got what the, what the retail value of those castings are, and this assumes that you've put in a uh, castings unit retail value. And the same goes for the worm unit retail value too. This is just the overall uh, value of your worm inventory on that day. Um, so we'll move over here to the sustainable harvest. Uh, we already talked about what a sustainable harvest is and this just tells you what it is at the end of each of these months. And uh, the same thing goes for sustainable harvest value. If you have put in a worm unit retail value, this just tells you what the retail value is of your sustainable harvest uh, at the end of the month. All right, one of the nice things that we can do here too is uh, print our results. Uh, in order to do this, just uh, click that button and the page is gonna generate a nice uh, PDF here for you. It's gonna include all your inputs and what your uh, goals were and also just kind of give you a representation of what you saw on the page in terms of your results. So that's a nice thing to be able to do to print off, keep, and then uh, compare your uh, results in the future to what you projected. Okay, well that about does it for our uh, urban worm calculator uh, tutorial here today. Uh, I did want to take a couple minutes to tell you what the calculator does and what it does not. Uh, this thing just does math plain and simple. It is just going to give you results based on whatever you put into it. So if you think of it as garbage in, garbage out, uh, it's, it gives you a good idea of what you can expect it to do for you. It doesn't make you a better worm farmer, it doesn't uh, make your worms grow any faster, it doesn't control conditions in your, your bins or your grow beds or anything like that. It just simply tells you that if you hit 30% uh, reproduction rate that you are going to get a certain number of worms at a certain point in the future. Uh, if you want to tell it that your worms are going to reproduce at 160% in a given month, which believe it or not is possible um, over the short term anyway, uh, it is going to give you some ridiculous numbers as you see here. Uh, it doesn't take into account whether you have the manpower or the sales ability to sell 2.5 bajillion dollars worth of worms. Uh, it just tells you that if you were to hit say 160 percent re monthly reproduction rate for two years what your uh, retail value will be in the future so it's funny some of the some of the feedback I've had on this is that my numbers are too high my numbers are too low and I think that fundamentally misunderstands what we're trying to do here uh, I'm not trying to tell anybody what their number should be I'm just saying that based on what you put into the calculator this is what your numbers will be if your assumptions are correct. So go into this with, uh, with that in mind, that uh, this is a calculator, pure and simple, and it's good to use for planning and good to use for projections, but only if the numbers you put in are somewhat close uh, to reality. So thank you for your interest here, and I look forward to answering any questions that you may have in the comments below or on my blog at uh, urbanwormcompany.com. See ya!